It's always an honor when we can take some time to thank our veterans for your service to our country. I remember uh, a couple weeks ago in Mantino sitting next to a 101-year-old veteran having a, an old style. He's probably still trying to drink his old style. But it was just to just hear his stories and to sit next to everything he's been through. And uh, every year, the Orland Park has a veteran service at the Civic Center. And I think I've been there for the last 25 or 30 years. And, you know, I, I, when I think of all they've been through and as they get older, and a lot of them are in wheelchairs. And uh, so I get there on Saturday morning and I've known a lot of these guys ever since I've been here. And Ron is standing there. And I say, Ron, how come you don't come to church anymore? And he says, well, when you came to All Saints, you were too young. And now you're too old. So I ain't coming anymore. He'll be back. But somehow this honesty kind of puts life in perspective. And you know, you, you just think of the amount of gratitude that we have for what they have done and what they've been through. And these, you know, whenever we see a vet, sometimes just say, thank you for your service. And uh, we should probably say that not just to veterans, because there's all kinds of people every day that serve us. And so one day I decided, I'm just quietly, every time I go somewhere, whether it's for a cup of coffee or to pay for my gasoline or whatever, I'm just gonna say to that person, thank you for your service. And so I was up at the Circle K there on 131st Street and I, had to go in to buy a couple things and pay my bill, and uh, she, you know, hands me my receipt, and I said, well, thank you for your service. And she goes, I'm not a veteran. Oh, you're that minister guy down the street, aren't you? <laughs> and I said, well, sometimes I think it's just important to just thank people that serve us doing ordinary things on ordinary days. Maybe it's the plumber or the teacher. Maybe it's the person that cuts your hair. It could be the nurse, the pipe fitter. Could be the cop or the firefighter. All those people that take time to serve us, that we should more often say thank you for your service, and we should take the time that we have and the jobs that we have and do our best to serve others. You know, one of the things that I've lived with over the years, and I don't know if it would identify with you, but there's a thing called survivor's guilt. It sometimes happens when you're okay and somebody you love is not. And every Veterans Day, I, I just flash back to the late 60s when I was in a fraternity. And we were all huddled in the fraternity basement because that was when they had the calling of the numbers in the draft for the Vietnam War. And all of us were there hoping our number would not be called, that we did not want to go. And I was one of them. And then uh, a week later, we got word that one of my fraternity brothers, that his older brother was killed in Vietnam. And that got to me because I'm sitting there hoping I don't have to go. And here's a young guy just a couple years older than me, and he gets killed in action. I'll never forget that. It sometimes makes me feel guilty, but that's just the way life is. And somehow we have to take that, maybe use our guilt to make sure that we use our time to do good unto others, because that person's time is no longer here. I remember Jerry Arnold, when he was living, and he would sit there in the second row, and we had a service honoring some of the military, and I mentioned the different wars, and as he's leaving the church, he's wearing his Korean War veterans hat, and he goes, Don, I forgot to mention the Korean War, which is not good, but he smiled. And then he put his hands on my shoulder, and he said, by the way, Don, um, you can quit apologizing for not serving in the military because you do make military coffee. <laughs> and every day when I make the coffee, I, take a let, I, I make it just right. And then I add that extra scoop that most of you don't like. And I say, this is honor of you, Jerry. And every day I do that to keep his memory alive. My guess is, especially as we get older, we look back. And we look back at what we've done and what we haven't done and some of the mistakes we've made and some of the victories we've had. And it hit me this week as I did a funeral on Thursday for a, a gentleman who died suddenly at the age of 63. 
And he left behind his wife and a couple kids and a couple grandkids. And I got up to speak, and it was a totally strange audience. I didn't know anybody. And I said, I don't, first of all, I don't believe in strangers. I believe that we're somehow bound together by the power and the beauty of the human spirit. And for some crazy reason, we're here today. But I said, one thing that I think about is your loved one. He died, and he's 15 years younger than I am. And I sometimes wonder, why am I here? And why isn't he? And then I realized that obviously his journey is over, at least his earthly journey. And he ran out of time. But I still got time. So in a way, he teaches me that tomorrow and the next day and the next day, use my time. Use your time to be of service unto others. Then I think of the bee man here. You know, your grandson. Born in March, died in November. My gosh, didn't even have a chance. And yet, his spirit is very, very much alive. And somehow, even though you can feel guilty for that, how come he didn't get a chance and I've got more than a chance, we realize that we got to take the time that he didn't have and somehow tuck it inside the guts and fiber of who we are and make a difference. So the bee man knows that in a way he's our rabbi. And in his innocence and in his not being here but just a few months, he teaches us what's important and what's not. I think of the gospel lesson for today. I'm not sure. It's about Mary and Martha. Be kind of curious to see whether you're a Mary or a Martha. Martha's the busybody. I mean, she's always cleaning the house, always taking care of people, always doing stuff. And Mary's the goof, lives by the Spirit. And so Jesus comes over for dinner. And Martha's scurrying around, making sure everything's just right for Jesus. And what does Mary do? As soon as Jesus walks in the door, he sits at, she sits at Jesus' feet and just listens to him. And Martha says, Lord, it's not right, is it, that I'm sitting here doing all the work and Mary's just sitting at your feet. And Jesus says, Martha, you get so worried about doing things. Mary is doing the right thing. In other words, I'm here only for a moment. I may never be back. Clean the house later. The food isn't going to go bad. I'm here to teach you what's right. And Mary did the right thing. And I realize every day, in the midst of our busyness and craziness, we are called to do the right thing. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we can say hallelujah to the stuff that happens to us, and sometimes we feel guilty about what we didn't do. But today we honor a bunch of men and a bunch of women who have given us the incredible gift of freedom so that we can do the right thing which is to give every day that we have the very best that we've got and be of service unto others. Amen. If you're able to, please rise for the creed.